Let's start with my week 10 top 25 and take a look at how it stacks up with the AP top 25. All right. We're mostly in agreement about where we think teams are, right? And as far as these are good teams, these are bad teams, and then we're or not even bad teams. We just have some moving and shaking amongst uh, my rankings and their rankings. Starting with number one, I still got Ohio State at number one. They still got Georgia at number one. Fine. I think it's interesting to point out really quickly that the Associated Press has a tie at two with Tennessee and Ohio State. And I think that's more of what we've seen from Tennessee than it is what we've seen from Ohio State, meaning Tennessee has risen to the challenge every single time this week. And it's reflecting that. I'm still just not sold on Tennessee being one of the three best teams in college football. I think that's still Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan. I have my, I I think Ohio State's just a more complete team than both Georgia and Michigan. And I think Tennessee still has a lot to prove here, man. Like the fact that you held Kentucky to six points in a win is great, but that you gave up more points to UT Martin is not. And I'm going to hold that against you. I think if you're going to schedule these FCS teams, You can't afford to let them score if you want to get credit for it in a college football playoff selection committee rankings, let alone my rankings or any associated press's top 25. But I think it says a lot that going into a game that could change hearts and minds, mainly mine, about what Tennessee is or isn't, two is fine, right? What I'm really interested to see is, well, we'll talk about it in my burning questions as we relate to Tennessee. And then for me, it's about tears at this point, right? Because we're getting to the part of the season where we're trying to whittle the field as to who can make and play in the college football playoff. And I believe that the AP agrees with me in that that conversation stops at number 10, right? That's where we are right now. All 10 of those teams have a road to the college football playoff. And I think all the teams behind them do not. I think that's pretty clear right now. But right now, Georgia, Ohio State, Tennessee, they all control their own destiny. You could even put Michigan and Clemson in there. But I think. Tennessee, Georgia, they're going to weed each other out right this weekend. And then Clemson, if they run the table, they make the ACC championship game. We'll see. Michigan is a good football team. They'll weed each other out with Ohio State. We'll see. Alabama is interesting here because I think the Alabama, they went out, they win the SEC championship game. They're going to find a way in. It's just a matter of who did they beat and what are the other three spots? Texas, Christian, Oregon, USC, and UCLA is also interesting uh, in that where nobody is – Nobody's interested in making Texas Christian a top 16, not even me, even if they are undefeated because the eye test is the eye test. And if we do a resume test, you know, Texas Christian is number two team in the country. And everybody listening to this is like, nah, dog. No, they're not. And then you'd say they're undefeated. They got four ranked wins. Uh Uh-huh. Who they played. And then we have a conversation about the Big 12. So rather than continuing to put off my top five, Burning questions ahead of the college football playoff selection committee's initial rankings release on November 1st. Let's get straight to them. And we're going to go one to five on this thing. The first question I have is, could Tennessee be the number one team in the first college football playoff rankings polls? And the answer is yes, they could be. Uh, Nod to producer Tyler on this, who's continued to say, we should not be shocked if they are the number one team when these rankings come out, because they certainly have the resume to go with this. Uh, Five ranked wins in eight games. That is the most ranked wins of an AP opponent for anybody in the sport, right? They also do it in the vaunted SEC and in the SEC East, which is no snooze fest. Matter of fact, if we're just ranking divisions, we're probably making the SEC East the third best division in all of college football, even as we're getting rid of divisions in football. They got one of the best edge players in the country in Bryson Young. No relation. They also have uh, the best wide receiver in the SEC in Jalen Hyatt, who's already broken the Tennessee school record for TDs in a season. And he gets that moniker because, yeah, he sliced up Alabama. Five five touchdown passes uh, that caught in that game for 200 plus yards. Dude that couldn't even stay on the field last year is having a year to remember in 2022. We'll see if he can hold on to that moniker because. Well, to do that, his quarterback's going to have to continue to operate at a Heisman caliber level. That'd be Hendon Hooker, who still hasn't thrown but one interception all year and just two since November 13th of last year. We're coming up on just, what, 14 days uh, since 365 in a year. So two interceptions in a calendar year, it's pretty doggone good. And if they beat Georgia, 
we're going to have a totally different conversation on this show the following week because that would be a seismic event as we're talking about the college football playoff. And then just to go ahead and talk about it, I think I got what the college football playoff selection committee is going to do, though. I don't think it's going to be Tennessee at one. Much as I think they could be there, and nobody should argue if they are, I think the college football playoff selection committee is just going to continue to stay with what works for them, and that's being conservative and leaning on the past. So it'll be number one Georgia, defending national champs, undefeated. They still got Stetson Bennett at quarterback, who I think is much more of a point guard in this system uh, than he is a playmaker in the system. Bryce Young being a playmaker rather than a point guard. That's the difference. Number two, I think we could see Tennessee at two and everybody be fine with that, right? Between one versus two in a regular season matchup, almost like LSU Alabama years ago, or even Georgia Alabama when they're the crossers. Then at number three, I think you're looking at Ohio state and number four, you're looking at Michigan. So what's great about that top four though, is it ain't going to be the same come December. It can't because those teams have to play each other, which is kind of fun. And the closest thing we get to a real expanded playoff. But for now, we're stuck with these four. Second question that I have among my top five burning questions, will Texas Christian be ranked in the top four in the initial rankings? I kind of touched on it and nodded to it when we were talking about my rankings, the AP rankings. The answer is no. Like, it sucks because if you look at a blind resume, Four rank wins. You're averaging better than 40 points per game. You got an outstanding quarterback putting out outstanding numbers up. You got a defense that's been but don't break. And you're off to an 8-0 and start in Big 12 play. If I told you that that team was Oklahoma, you'd say, yeah, that's a top four team because Oklahoma. But as soon as I tell you that it's Texas Christian, we're talking about the Scooby-Doo meme where I forget my man's name, but you know, the blonde dude with the sash around his neck, he pulling off the ghost mask and whatnot. And then it reveals that it's TCU and you feel like you've been shook. You feel like somebody been bamboozled. You feel like you've been hoodwinked. That would be what goes on. The nature of the sport. It's one of the things that I've had to really learn since I got into this Yankees job that is mine, is that you got to talk about the sport the way it is, not the way you want it to be. And I'm very fond of talking about what I think could change for the better in the sport. But right now, the sport is about blue bloods and brands. And what did you do in the past? Because Cincinnati runs table undefeated 2020, doesn't make college football playoff. Runs table undefeated 2021. Okay, you did it in 2020. We can give you the nod here. I think there's going to have to be some moving and shaking at the top for the Horned Frogs to get into one of these spots. But it doesn't diminish what Sonny Dykes has done in year one. My goodness. At Texas Christian, where they still have the statue of Gary Patterson on the campus. Yet, Sonny Dykes is the first coach in Big 12 history to get off to an 8-0 start. And it's the first 8-0 start that Texas Christian has had since 2015. All right? Like, nothing to sneeze at. They got Big Noon coming to town on this Saturday to play Texas Tech, of all people. I'm excited about that. See what they can do, get to 9-0. All you can do is hope that somebody in front of you slips, and then you get there. Or maybe you were going to learn what Oklahoma fans learned a little too late. It's not such a bad thing to not be in the dunker spot that is the number four spot in the college football playoff. So it usually means the number one team is going to beat you like you stole something and you're going to feel embarrassed about it as opposed to, you know, playing a New Year's Six Bowl game and then going to win, right? And then you can do what Utah did in 08. Run the table undefeated, claim a national championship. Or what Central Florida did in 2017. Run the table, claim a national championship. It's within your purview. I'm fine with that. I think you should be too. My third burning question. Where will Michigan fall? This is going to be interesting. This is going to tell us a lot about just what the college football playoff selection committee thinks of the Big Ten and Michigan, right? Because I think Michigan adopting the SEC's philosophy for non-conference scheduling, meaning cupcakes, muffins, and donuts for an illustrious cakewalk, is fine. You know, I was wrong to say that it wouldn't work or that I didn't. Wrong to say that it didn't work. I don't think I even say that it wouldn't work. I said that I can't tell you that they're going to be good, right? But they said, RJ, we play a Big Ten schedule, and that counts for something. And we play in the Big Ten East, and that counts for more. And the more I look at this, and the more I look at Tennessee getting to schedule UT Martin in October, and the more I look at uh, these Chattanooga games and Mercer games that Georgia and Alabama get to schedule in November, the more I'm like, fine, if this is what the sport is, then far be it from me to tell Michigan that they can't schedule Colorado, Hawaii, and UConn. Shout out to UConn, by the way. They beat BC last night. Yo, hey, Jeff Halfley, that's, that's your BC. But I think Michigan's going to end up probably right where I put them at that number four spot. And that'd be kind of scrumptious because we're looking at perhaps a Georgia-Michigan uh, one to four, maybe, maybe. 
right? But I don't think it's going to work out that way again because teams got to play each other. Georgia got to play Tennessee. Michigan got to play Ohio State. But I think that they're going to see what everybody else has seen, which is Blake Corum is outstanding in that backfield. And whereas it was thunder and lightning, as people like to say last year with Hassan Haskins and Blake Corum this year, lightning and lightning with Blake Corum running the ball 20 plus times a game. And then Donovan Edwards also being a home run hitter. You've made an upgraded quarterback, which I think could help you in a college football playoff setting because J.J. McCarthy can make plays that, frankly, Cade McNamara cannot. You got outstanding defensive line play. Jesse Mentor's calling one hell of a game uh, every single game. Like, it's the first time that I can remember where the Broyles Award a winner, the Broyles Award winner, excuse me, could come from both Ohio State or Michigan in the same year. You know, Jim Knowles doing the Lord's work over there as defense coordinator at Ohio State. And then the triumphant, the, the trifecta, that is Matt Weiss and Sharon Moore on one side, Jesse Mentor on the other from Michigan. I could be fine with any one of those groupings winning the Broyles Award. That's nothing too shabby. Some really great football being played at the top of the conference in the Big Ten. Okay, number four on my list of burning questions here. Where is Alabama going to be ranked? All right, the short answer is ahead of Texas Christian and behind Clemson, which for me puts Bama at number six. Now, Bama lost to Tennessee. If Tennessee is at one, that's fine. That's fine for Bama because all they got to do is get back to the SEC championship game and then beat the number one team in the country, right? Provided Tennessee gets past Georgia. Still don't think it's going to happen, but it could, right? And who wouldn't want to see Bama, Tennessee again in the SEC championship game, especially after we're talking about what is turning into a dream year for Tennessee after having never beaten Nick Saban ever tried beating him twice in one year. That would be outstanding to watch. But I also think that Clemson's going to get that nod because, well, Clemson's undefeated and Alabama's not. And Clemson has proven it doesn't matter that they play a watered-down ACC schedule. It doesn't matter that they schedule one good Power 5 team and then two cupcakes. It doesn't matter that they play maybe three ranked opponents all year. In 2018, they played just two. They have shown, 2018, 2015, that if they show up to the college football playoff, they can snatch a wig. Okay, they can take Alabama. They can take Notre Dame. They can take whoever the hell it is you want to put in front of them. Ohio State. They're going to show up to play in that game. And that's worthwhile because, again, the playoff selection committee likes to say we're going to put the best teams into the playoff. And I'm like, yeah, OK, whatever. I, I want this out of your hands just as quickly as possible. Suits at the Gaylord Texan making decisions about college football that's decided on a scoreboard will never be OK with me. But it is the system we have. All right. Last question I have here. How far is the climb for the Pac-12? Yo, hey, look. I was having fun a couple weeks ago, but it's still true two weeks from now. Or two two weeks. Well, it'd be true two weeks from now, too. The Pac-12 is the best at keeping the Pac-12 out of the college football playoff. You know? I mean, one way or another. You can take a win on the road at Ohio State, who won the Rose Bowl last year, and turn it into a dud of a year for Oregon, who loses not just the Pac-12 championship that year, but twice to Utah in 13 days. You can take Oregon, who's undefeated in Pac-12 play and been just rolling up everybody they played since their first game, and turn that into, I don't think those dudes are very good, so much so that they might be number eight when the rankings come out. Why? Because they lost by 46 to Georgia. Now, it's the kind of loss that feels insurmountable. It's like having a face tattoo. Everybody's going to try to be polite to you. But what they're going to be saying is, what is that on your face? Especially if it's a botched face tattoo. And that's what a 46-point loss to Georgia is. Especially as Kent State put up 22. You cannot have an Oregon in the, pack, uh, in the, excuse me, in the college football playoff right now knowing that Kent State Scored 22 on Georgia, you scored three. Knowing that Missouri had a 10-point lead on Georgia and you scored three. It's just not a good look. But if you are inclined to believe that Oregon is a better football team today than they were when they played Georgia, maybe. But even then, you need lots of moving and shaking in front of you. And that includes USC, UCLA. They need shaking in front of them. You need Texas Christian to catch an L. Clemson to catch an L. Maybe Alabama to take a second L. You need carnage ahead of you. And you're going to get a little bit of it. But if you do not believe that Oregon is a top 18 
for USC and UCLA are top 10 teams. The Pac-12 is looking at getting skunked in the playoff again. And as much as I crow about wanting to have the college football playoffs expanded to 12 tomorrow, nobody should be angrier about this than the Pac-12, who basically signed on to a four-team playoff when there are five power five conferences. Like, it's just, I'm sorry, that, that, but that just sucks. It really does, because I think there is good football played in Eugene. I think there's good football played in Los Angeles, even if uh, Angelinos don't want to go see it in the form of USC and UCLA. But you're also talking about does it matter and who's crowing for you, right? This is the part that I think is going to be interesting come December if the Pac-12 is indeed in a spot to get a fourth spot in the playoff. One of the things that the SEC has done very well is put Nick Saban on television, Gorby Smart on television, saying we ought to be in that game. And then you have folks online and you have your conduits saying they deserve, deserve a shot. I'm asking you, who are those people for USC and UCLA? And the reason I put it this way is because you look at stands and you reflect, do you like college football or do you like sports? Because we're having a college football conversation over here in the South. We're not having a sports conversation. The reason Oklahoma is a brand is because Oklahoma is the pro team. It's fine that you have other things to do in L.A. It's fine that the weather's nice and you don't need to wear a sweater like this. But when you're talking about playing in the college football playoff, it matters that your college football fandom is there too. Otherwise, you're going to have to be Matt Leiner, Reggie Bush, and Pete Carroll absolutely sunning everybody you play or it's just a tough, sled to pull up that hill not shade just facts thank you for watching the number one college football show please remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video so that you don't miss any of the best college football coverage in america